Nā te ū tonu o James ki āna mahi toi, ka tīmata ta nautua. Kei Glenn Innes i tāma ki makaurau tēnei whakairo. Ahakoa te momo mahi toi a James, ka hono tonu atu ki te ao Māori. I think where I've come as an artist and a person through, through my artwork, you know, I think it's quite important to um, profile, you know, things Māori, you know, everywhere. You know, especially in the only country in the world that has Māori and this particular type of art form. You know, so people come here from over the world, they don't want to see you know, Japanese art and they want to see sort of art from Fiji or, you know, they want to see Māori art. So because I have a background in building, you know, I'm not unfamiliar with sort of working in large scale. I was quite interested in getting into the public work scene. The latest ones to date are a Pawaha, a gateway project in Ukutoya, Glen Innes, and patterns adorning the motorway systems in um, Spaghetti Junction in Auckland City. Yeah, that's sort of one of my quests in life to sort of become more involved in public work so we can get the face of Māori and Māori art, you know, in the public eye, as a reminder to people that kei te oro tonu te iwi Māori and uh, kei te oro tonu, you know, uh, yeah, kei te oro tonu te iwi Māori, you know. You know, for me as a Māori artist, you always need to reference back to tangata whenua. So some of the stories for that particular area tell us that there used to be um, large kalaka groves growing in that area because it was a sort of a water source as well. So one of the particular motifs that I did was uh, a kalaka berry and uh, just a torinoa spiral pattern sort of representing the modi or the memory basically of what used to be there, you know, now bedded in concrete. Yeah, just a way to sort of, you know, leave your mark on the landscape or, you know, yeah, participate in the process of life, you know. As the work became more public, there was more of a need to um, sort of stand up and be counted, you could say, and talk about the work and sort of take a um, sort of leadership role in sort of speaking and ceremony and things like that. And just felt lacking. And just had an experience one time where uh, the Okomatu didn't turn up for one of the hui and, um, you know, I was sort of the one there with the most of a little bit of real, and um, I felt really uncomfortable and um, yeah, I, I got quite distressed at this particular opening, having been put in that position, and so I thought, well, I could either fight or flight sort of thing, so I, from that point I decided, okay, next year I'm going to sort of um, take up te reo Māori, you know, and sort of, yeah, take up that challenge to Ki aku i tō tātana i reo rangatira, eh? ki te you know, hāngai i te kaupapa o nā mahi toi, ki hāngai ki nā, yeah, ki te tautoko nā mahi. Nā mahi o nā tūpuna, nā mahi o nā, you know, o nā mahi, mahi toi, e, nā mahi a ngai tātou, ki a oro tonu ai. So that prompted me to pursue te reo Māori and so I went to sign myself up for Ātārangi down on Waikato. Uh, mā te tohu wa Matariki i ngā whitu, i ngā whitu rangitia e tohu wa nō mā tātou e hui hui mai tēnei te wāhanga o te tau. He maha nā rau i mi hei rapu mā James mō ana mahi toi I tēnei wā kei te rapu poro rākau kauri rāua ko tana hoa a Joe. Nice log to me here. See that log there? There, look. Oi. 
so four wheel, that's all good. Possibility of lots of work in the future. That other one eh? that, um, that other long straight one that's over. Yeah. Over there. Well, that one over there. I actually had another dream at that particular time about um, it was a big tour sort of hold council with me. In the process of this dream, he wanted to hop on my back and wanted to be carried, you know, to a particular place. And in this dream, I was a little bit unsure of that. I felt a little bit uneasy. So, um, you know, eventually he says, oh, okay, sweet ass. And so the, I remember the sort of tuatara walking around the back and then calling up my legs onto my back and then sort of like morphing into me, you know, sort of like disappearing into, you know, into my body. And then I was a little bit, oh, that's... Yeah, a little bit uncomfortable at first, but then once it had actually immersed itself into me, I sort of was quite comfortable with it. And so that was sort of like the, the main body of the dream. And then I remember the next day going to class and saying to Pakeha, oh, you know, I had this dream. And, and all he said to me was, oh, you know, oh, your two pointers are looking after you, you know. And I says, oh, yes, yeah. so I didn't really sort of think too much about that. So I held on to that dream which is eventually why I've had the work that I've had done on me in relation to Tamoko, because it sort of tells that story and it relates back to that particular dream that I had. And like um, the tuatara and the mokomoko being a, a kaitiaki for, you know, mā tauranga and ngā mea tapu tapu tō te Māori, sacred knowledge and things like that. But to me, it's just more about, yeah, my pursuit and relationship to learning and deepening my understanding of um, art and um, cultural perspective in, in general. Yeah, so I could have more kai for my kōrero for, you know, what I do uh, as an artist. And then as you become more recognised as an artist, you become a teacher in lots of ways. So I think that, you know, if you can teach people through experience, real life experience, well, you know, in some ways people can't question it because you've actually done, you know, you've embodied the experience into your core at all.